All right, people. Whoa. I'm just making this clip, and I'm sorry I'm eating a sandwich, um, to document something which is about to happen. It's a Thursday night. It's November 28th, 2013, outside Paris, France. And I was just out um, running my evening errands, and uh, I saw my crazy neighbor, Bernard Levin, again. He's been living two doors down for years, and I think he's a psycho. I've had him in here before. He showed me some very, very interesting stuff about his life and uh, Princess Di's death, which he forensically analyzed the day after when he wasn't allowed to be there. And he just spotted me on the street and said hi and said he wanted to show me something from 1968. And I don't really understand what it is. But I told him, yeah, he could come by. He's going to come by in about an hour. And, uh... Um... He doesn't speak a word of English. Not a word. So the interview is going to be in French, and I will just try to add what I can. And if anything happens to me, Bernard did it. <laughs> he is a uh, he is a murderer. Uh, it was uh, involuntary homicide, however, which would be manslaughter in the United States. And um, I think that he may have also killed our guardian here in 2002, but how do I know? So these are grave charges, but he did tell me about the accidental murder. He has severe sleep apnea and was driving a car with some orphan kids to take them to a circus or something. And he thought, well, it's only two kilometers, it'll be okay. But it wasn't, and he killed a mother of two. And I don't know where he's been. He doesn't look good. He's addicted to pain medicine. So I'm going to probably let him in this evening, you know, and see what he has to show me and try to share it with you people. I said, well, good, you know, I could make a clip. He was like, oh, cool, you know. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm nutty, but, you know, a lot of my journalistic assignments since 1975, I have not accepted because they were just too scary. I remember one of the first um, that I did not want to do was, um, it had to do with like Satan and animal sacrifice in the Lower East Side of New York for the East Village Eye. And then the whole BCCI scandal in the 80s, which was called the octopus at that time, I was strongly advised by uh, a friend who had an editorial capacity at the time to let that go. The friend had been suicided. This journalist had been suicided. The case is never solved. You know, he, he was that guy who, you know, cut his wrists in the bathtub supposedly in a motel. And this is, you know, not, not too likely. And, um... Apparently, uh, what I heard was that he was getting these phone calls for weeks before his death, um, and somebody was playing him back clips of himself talking to people in rooms, just like casually, to let him know that he was being listened to. And, well, you know, he's toast now, and the case was never solved. But Bernard is certainly interesting, and I will do my best to try to keep myself intact. I'm alone here tonight, and it is a huge risk. Um, <laughs> I, I think I'm going to let him in and see what he has to show me, you know, if he can figure out the door code and everything, you know, whatever. So, okay, <laughs> Bernard Levin's coming over, and he is... Uh, a certified Paris nutcase. As am I, I suppose. Okay. <laughs>